Hello everybody, this is Philippa Kelly from the California Shakespeare Theatre where I'm resident dramaturg. I have climbed out of bed on a very foggy, smoky, Boonville morning in California to talk with you about The Merry Wives of Windsor. This was the play that Shakespeare wrote in his own contemporary time and place as a setting and the only play in which that occurred. So let's start with the wives of Windsor. They make an interesting comparison with the many women's roles written over the course of Shakespeare's life. Think of the plays we know so well, populated by women of experience. Lady Macbeth, Volumnia, Tamara, Goneril, Regan, Cleopatra, all women whose lives end in death or disappointment, and all women for whom power spells personal ambition and negative outcomes for the husbands and sons in their lives, whether their men's heads end up on the throne, briefly the chopping block, or baked into a pie. Think of the adventurous young women in Shakespeare as well, Portia, Rosalind, Celia, Julia, Julia, uh, Viola, all of whom get what they want only by disguising themselves as men until they can pop out victorious at the end, joyfully claiming their man and their future. Or if, like Lear's Cordelia, they don't undergo a spell of gender transformation, they're still not allowed to be active women in the world with their own opinions until they come giving venison and begging forgiveness. In the Shakespeare canon, it feels like Paulina of the Winter's Tower remains almost alone to advocate loudly for women's rights. And her voice is eventually subdued by a late marriage. Now, thinking of all these women, let's think about the women in Merry Wives. If we approach the play from a vocal perspective, what a triumph for the women. They can speak unhindered by disguise or by any other man. They are not quieted by their husbands. There's one piece you're tattling that I pray you peace that is delivered to mistress quickly, but all the other exclamations of peace are directed toward men, telling them to shut up. Moreover, the married women will not be quelled or beaten for cheating the fate that has been planned for them by Fullstar. Indeed, it's the women who get to do the beating to um, Shakespeare's poor old uh, rascal. Young Anne Page ends up winning the husband of her choice against the wishes of both her parents. And this is, as theatre uh, critic Elizabeth Schaefer has noted, because she's learned her powerful lessons from her mother. And this brings me to another fascinating aspect of the Merry Wives of Windsor in production. Women working together to achieve a great outcome. In this, I can virtually hear Shakespeare germinating the play with much ado about nothing in mind, and moreover, preluding all's well and the winter's tale. Women plus women women as women can put on a show and manage the stage. Falstaff has sought to divide and conquer, but once the married women wise up to his ploys, they also rise up and band together to make a fool of the man who would have made a fool of them. They don't have to play by the same rules as men. They make their own rules invented on the fly with the props and tools and scenery and the buck basket that they have. Everybody, it's been a pleasure to give you a little introduction to the Merry Wives of Windsor. And again, this is Philippa Kelly, resident dramaturg for the California Shakespeare Theatre, speaking to you from Northern California. Bye for now and enjoy the Merry Wives.